Wonder. A huge, aggressive, voracious swamp monster. A cunning ambush killer, always ready to crush its next victim to death. It could be you. This is the stuff of nightmares. A silent killer with over six meters of sheer muscle power, as thick as a car tire. But is this the real anaconda? South America. The Caribbean nation of Guyana on the northeast coast boasts one of the largest unspoiled stretches of rainforest on the continent. Home to a huge, almost legendary reptile. The biggest and heaviest snake on earth, the green anaconda. Its enormous size and grisly killer habits have given it a bad reputation. The floodplains, swamps and rivers east of the Andes are its home and water its element. But its secretive ways mean this silent killer remains an enigma. Anacondas kill by literally squeezing the life out of their victims. This deadly embrace is the strongest known on Earth. It's like nine people standing on your chest. It may be an horrific way to die, but for this scaly predator, the technique is a success. Constriction is one of the oldest hunting methods among snakes. It's made the anaconda a winner for at least 20 million years, including today. An enormous monster lives right among the people of Georgetown, and they have no idea it's there. It seems unlikely such large creatures could remain unnoticed, but anacondas have found secret sanctuaries in the urban jungle. Water ditches are a convenient hangout. As night falls, a silent killer is on the loose. In fact, the city offers an easy life. There's plenty of food walking the streets. A dog is just the right size for a snack. You just have to know where to find it. Anacondas may have a trick to seek prey even in the dark. It's thought they can sense their body heat. Almost every organism has its own heat signature. Although a snake wouldn't see a picture like that of a thermal camera, it could enable it to target victims accurately. Under the cover of darkness, the anaconda's deadly activities go widely unnoticed by its human neighbors. And the menu is by no means restricted to our canine friends. The good thing about living near people is their livestock. Snakes lost their legs in the course of evolution millions of years ago. But for these smooth assassins, it's no disadvantage. Being super flexible and extraordinarily strong means no obstacle is too big or too small. Testing the air with its forked tongue, the predator seeks out its prey. For the chicken, 
Escape is futile. <laughs> the struggle is brief as the anaconda's body winds itself around the hapless bird. Its embrace becomes tighter and tighter until the chicken dies from asphyxiation. City life even offers a few comfortable, if risky, niches to warm up. In the cool of the night, a car engine must seem like a heavenly place for an anaconda. Anacondas love the warmth. Around 28 to 35 degrees Celsius is ideal. They tolerate a little less at night, but still, a warm niche is like a magnet for them. And if you're this flexible and strong, nothing comes easier than getting into a cozy nest like this. It could prove a nasty surprise for its human owner. As day breaks, the cityscape is transformed. Lotus flowers enchant. They were first brought to Guyana from India and have spread like wildfire in canals and ponds. The land here lies below sea level, so the ground drains badly and there's plenty of standing water. Perfect anaconda habitat. The thick forest of lotus flowers and leaves is also home to small creatures that make ideal baby food for anacondas. The leaves can reach 60 centimeters across, a perfect perch for a young hunter. This one is still less than a meter long and just a few months old, but already a killer. Many young anacondas don't survive long. There are wildcats, stray dogs, or simply urban traffic to contend with. But here among the lotus, the baby is safe. It's these drainage canals that have allowed the giant snakes to thrive in the urban sprawl. Swamps and marshes used to cover this land. But over the last centuries, humans have turned swamp into solid ground, land that was traditionally the anaconda's realm. Because it's low-lying, it's exposed to the relentless attack of the sea. An extensive protective wall had to be built to replace a natural buffer, coastal mangroves. Before humans moved in, a sturdy belt of mangroves lined the fragile coastline, shielding it from the sea's merciless assault. Their tangled roots anchor the trees, trap soil, and break the power of the waves, so the coastline is safe and stable. Surviving where land and sea meet, they've had to find ingenious ways of reproducing. Red mangrove seeds begin to germinate while still attached to the tree. They're also buoyant and can be dispersed widely by the water. Eventually, the seed changes its density to float vertically, ready to root itself in the coastal mud and grow. There are usually only three or four different tree species here, but they support one of the most productive and complex ecosystems on Earth. Mangroves thrive in sweltering conditions, rooted in choking mud, and tolerate salt levels that would kill ordinary plants. They line coastlines and estuaries, where the salt content decreases. Even anacondas can survive here. We tend to think of anacondas lurking in inland swamps, yet here they are, right in the thick of the tangled mangrove roots, where the river 
beats the sea. Everyone here has to be exceptionally tolerant to an ever-changing environment. Twice a day, the tide floods the mangroves, then leaves them high and dry. It triggers a changing of the guards. A different set of animals now emerges. Crabs come out of hiding and patrol the roots. A young spectacled caiman squelches through the mud looking for food. Unaware, he's being watched. The killer waits patiently for the perfect moment to strike. An anaconda's hunting success depends on split-second timing and speed. Caught in the snake's deadly coils, the last breath is squeezed out of the caiman's body. Where mangroves have given way to the unquenchable human thirst for terra firma, a new landscape emerges. Sugarcane plantations. It's a different sort of forest with a different bunch of residents. But since the fields are left largely undisturbed for months at a time, it draws a sizable crowd of creatures. And yet again, where there's food, there are anacondas. There's plenty of choice. Even a quick-legged iguana is a target. Distracted by food, it lets its vigilance slide. A fatal error. Death comes quickly, but eating the prize is a slow affair. Even a small meal like this takes around 30 minutes to swallow. But life in the fields is a double-edged sword for the anaconda. During harvest time, everything changes. The fields are set on fire to burn dry leaves and flush out unwanted critters. Miles of lush green go up in smoke. Animals desperately try to get away from the hellish inferno but many succumb to the flames. The anaconda's cumbersome bodies are sluggish and awkward on land, too slow to escape the fire. Were it not for the numerous drainage ditches, They can sit out the blaze, safe in their water world. So our preconception of anacondas as terrifying swamp specialists is plain wrong. They're in fact extremely versatile and secretive. Even in the anaconda's traditional home ranges on the savannah, the extremes of wet and dry seasons force them to be adaptable. During the wet season, the savanna is flooded and lush, supporting a rich diversity of life. Giant Amazon water lilies dot the water. They are native to the shallow waters of the Amazon basin and boast dramatic flowers 40 centimeters across. Although the leaves are delicate, they can easily support this young 20-kilo anaconda. A 
network of strong airfield ribs supports each leaf. They can carry weights of 45 kilos. Tough, pointy spikes keep fish at bay. It's a perfect perch. The skittish youngster can disappear into the water at a moment's notice. But this watery Eden is only temporary. The dry season puts a brutal end to it, and life without water is unthinkable for an anaconda. Some get going as soon as the water levels fall. This anaconda is seeking shelter in a damp mud hole to wait out the return of the rains. Others leave the parched heat in search of water. They migrate to wetter climes for the duration of the dry season. But as the last pools dry up, progress becomes increasingly difficult. Caked in mud, this anaconda is effectively blind, raising her body and flicking her forked tongue. The giant snake gathers sense. When the tongue is pulled back, it skims the sensitive Jacobson's organ on the roof of her mouth, which analyzes the information and helps her find her way. Her journey is fraught with dangers. Bushfires are frequent, and the monster snake's massive body is not built for speed on dry land. Her situation is precarious. Only the lucky can escape this merciless place. But despite the serious hurdles in her way, this anaconda is rewarded for her efforts. She finally finds relief in a permanent waterhole. She's found a place to survive the dry season. But when the rains return, she'll find her way back to the newly flooded savannah. For now, the sun continues to ruthlessly beat down on the savannah and even the last reserves of water disappear. An anaconda now caught out on the parched plains is in a dire situation. The largest anacondas are slow and sluggish on land. It means traveling far is out of the question. Over six meters long and weighing in at more than 100 kilos, this anaconda is a true monster. But she's fallen victim to the dry season's onslaught. Even a majestic predator like this has its weaknesses. The relentless heat of the sun takes its toll. But could this anaconda's own colossal size have helped seal her fate? A huge feast like this soon attracts visitors. Nature's Waste Disposal Units. As 
they squabble over the best bits and pick away the flesh, they expose what may have been the giant snake's downfall. Her skeleton. An anaconda's endless thin and flexible rows of ribs provide a very delicate scaffold for such a heavy body. It allows them to be extremely stretchy and flexible. But could it also mean that on land, very large anacondas might be crushed to death by their own enormous body weight? The anaconda's lungs and vital organs stretch along almost a quarter of her length. So, could a heavy body make breathing virtually impossible? In other words, do very large anacondas need to live in permanent water to support their hefty bodies? Could water availability limit an anaconda's size? In fact, the largest anacondas don't live on the savannah with its tough seasonal climate. They live in the rivers dissecting the rainforest, where they're not dictated to by the seasons. These massive animals need water that's just right, enough to support their heavy bodies and accessible riverbanks to bask in the sun. Arranging their bulk in coils helps support their own weight. The forest and its rivers offer rich pickings for an anaconda. As opportunists, they'll eat anything they can overpower. The sheer diversity of life here is staggering. including competitors. And enemies. Out here on the river, the hunter can quickly become the hunted. Even a predator as mighty as the anaconda has to keep her wits about her, whether on dry land or in the water. The rivers are filled with fish of all colors and sizes. They can also be on an anaconda's menu. Fish are relatively easy prey since they have few extremities that could make them tough to swallow. But the water is far from a one-sided hunting ground. Several types of piranha patrol the rivers. Up to 45 centimeters long, the black piranha is one of the biggest. But the real danger lurks below. A red-tailed catfish stalks the murky waters looking for prey. 
up to one and a half meters in length and weighing in at around 50 kilos, it's a force to be reckoned with. It's not a fussy eater. Both live and dead fish are welcome snacks. Anything that dares to swim by is gobbled up. Even a small anaconda can't mount a serious defense against this monster. A lookout position above the water is also not as secure as it might seem. In these parts, letting your concentration slip could be the last mistake you'll ever make. Black caiman roam the waters. Up to six meters long and weighing around 300 kilos, they are the biggest living members of the alligator family. This is the largest predator in South America. Guyana boasts one of the biggest populations of large black caiman, over three and a half meters in length. There is a strict hierarchy at work. The bigger the caiman, the higher the rank. Their biting power is immense, enough to crush bones and sever limbs. And if need be, their powerful tails can even propel them far enough out of the water to snatch prey from its perch. Strong, armored skin protects their backs from attack. Black caiman are built like reinforced submarines, formidable, tough, and well-armed. Compared to this river monster, the smooth, soft body of an anaconda doesn't stand a chance. The anaconda's jaws are lined with more than a hundred rows of needle-like, backward-facing teeth, designed to strike and keep hold of prey long enough to put its deadly coils to use. The black caiman's teeth, on the other hand, are strong, crushing and ripping tools, perfect for hunting and killing mammals like capybaras. Capybaras are as much at home on land as in the water, but as soon as they enter the river, they attract unwanted attention. With enormous power and lightning speed, the black caiman snatches its victim. And if one hunter struggles to shred its prey, others soon join in to rip and tuck at the corpse. A necessary collaboration, as caimans can neither bite off pieces nor chew them. Rolling their muscle-packed bodies soon tears even the toughest hide into manageable chunks. The caiman's hunting and feeding methods and their surprising teamwork and group hierarchy set them apart from their anaconda competitors. It may seem like a free-for-all, but there are strict rules. Only the largest and most dominant caimans get the best bits. All that's left of the hapless capybara are just a few morsels for some lucky scavengers. The 
anaconda is a completely different hunter. Her weapons are not her teeth, but her muscular body. But she too has a taste for capybaras, the largest rodents on earth. They're strict grass eaters. This is where their long, sharp teeth come in, allowing them to sever even the toughest stems. It makes them as formidable and dangerous as a rat the size of a Rottweiler. Capybaras spend much of their time in water, so they're excellent swimmers and can dive for long periods. But anacondas always approach with stealth. Once caught, there's little the capybara can do to get away. Even its teeth are useless weapons now. And in contrast to the caiman, an anaconda needs no help to devour its prey. Sharing is unheard of. But it takes time. Eating such a large meal in one sitting is a challenge. It can take up to eight hours. Still, it's worth the effort. A single large meal can sustain her for months. Guiana is aptly named. It means land of many waters and reflects the dense network of large and small rivers. From the highest points, they plunge 2,800 meters down towards the Atlantic in a dizzying array of waterfalls and rapids. Black Caymans don't venture beyond the falls, but there are no barriers for the anaconda. The pools are rich in fish and attract other predators too, giant otters. These two meter fish specialists aren't put off by the rapids. Even the clumsy youngsters efforts are crowned with success. Yet for now, they remain under the adults watchful eyes. And since the black caiman is absent, this is where the smaller and less powerful spectacled caiman thrives. It still grows to over two meters in length and is not to be trifled with. This is their hunting ground. Catfish, paku and piranha populate the rapids. The hunters just have to wait until a careless fish comes within striking range. Just above the falls, the waters change and the rapids disappear. Being more adaptable than its black caiman competitor, the anaconda has also conquered these upriver locations. A silent killer makes her way along the top of the falls, where the water scoured rocks provide good cover. Up here, where the black caiman is no threat, the anaconda is undisputed champion. A showdown between two ancient killers. These two predators have proven their worth for millions of years, using entirely different strategies. The anaconda's thin-skinned and agile flexibility versus the caiman's tough body armor and brute strength. The versatile anaconda also has relatives living in the forest alongside the river. The boa constrictor is one of them. It's much more aggressive and will strike at anything deemed a threat. It attacks with such speed that the action can only be captured in slow motion. It might seem small compared to its massive cousin, 
but the boa constrictor is a large, heavy-bodied snake. Big ones can weigh in at 27 kilos, a formidable predator. Iguanas are on this angry snake's menu. This one had better tread carefully. Just like the anaconda, the boa kills by constriction, usually on the forest floor. And there are other constrictors here. They live 30 or even 60 meters above ground, high up in the forest canopy. This habitat is poles apart from life on the ground or in the water and requires a different skill set. This is another anaconda relative, a stunning emerald tree boa. Its spectacular green coloring develops after about 10 months, leaving it incredibly well camouflaged for a life in the trees. Its body is like a single two meter long muscle and allows it to effortlessly glide between branches. It can suspend more than half of its body to bridge seemingly insurmountable gaps. The emerald tree boa seeks out its prey through scent, as well as by sensing body heat. The thermal receptors are clearly visible around its jaws. It means the killer can strike with pinpoint accuracy. Just like its relatives, it swallows its prey whole. But because its metabolism is extremely slow, it needs to feed much less frequently. Once every few months is enough. In this impenetrable jungle, rivers are often the only breaks in the dense canopy. This is where enough sunlight reaches the ground to warm it up. And anacondas need the sun's heat to regulate their body temperature. Caimans are no exception. They too have to partake in the basking ritual. Clinging closely to the warm rock, this caiman absorbs all the heat it can from the ground. A thermal imaging camera clearly shows how the rock and the sun heat up its body. The yellow zones are the warmest. For anacondas that don't live near the large rivers, but further in the forest, the permanent shade on the ground poses a serious problem. The sun's life-giving heat is absorbed by the forest canopy way above the ground. The forest has a layered canopy with very tall trees reaching up to 60 meters and 15 to 45 meter high trees below. So very little light filters through to the ground. There are few places for an anaconda to warm up. Most of the time, the only way to get to the light and warmth is up. Incredibly, even anacondas over four meters in length are able to climb trees nimbly, 
supported by their powerful muscles. Up in the canopy, temperatures are a sweltering 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. The giant snake can now bask in the sun until it has reached its perfect body temperature. It can take hours because its body is slow to heat up. The giant snake is ready for action around 30 degrees. An iguana has the same idea. It keeps a wary eye out for danger. While the spikes on its back are for intimidation, but although it might look formidable and dangerous, it is a harmless vegetarian. A boa constrictor has the lizard in her sight. Too late. A daring leap into the water. It can fall up to 15 meters and land without a scratch. The iguana had obviously already warmed up enough to react with lightning speed. The boa will have to find another meal, if it ever gets the chance. Preoccupied with its quest for food, the boa hasn't realized it too is a target. Anacondas have a taste for snakes. Nothing's off the menu. The larger and more powerful anaconda definitely has the upper hand in this duel. But swallowing a large snake up in the trees is anything but easy. With surprising agility and strength, the massive anaconda battles to keep control. But once caught in her hooked teeth, her meal is moving neither in nor out. Success at last. The meal is lost, but at least her jaws are free. In spite of their killer reputation, Anacondas are not very aggressive. In fact, the biggest ones are the most peaceful. Some are reputed to be about eight meters long. It seems that as an anaconda gets bigger, its confidence also grows. It no longer needs to be aggressive to intimidate enemies. At this size, she has nothing to fear. The largest anacondas are all females. Males reach no more than three meters in length. And the only time they all meet is during the mating season, where males are thought to follow pheromone trails to track down a female. Up to 13 males can join a single female is spectacular mating balls. It's like a slow motion wrestling match between the males for the chance to mate. They'll stay like this for around four weeks. Courtship and mating are entirely unaggressive affairs. Patience and persistence are what count here.
but things can change quickly afterwards. That's when the female anaconda can develop a taste for her own kind. She might devour one of her unlucky suitors, with good reason. She won't feed at all during the seven-month gestation period and lose up to 35% of her body weight. So a quick, low-risk snack following mating could be a last chance to bulk up before the long fasting period ahead. During her pregnancy, the female appears to avoid potentially harmful encounters. Even a boa constrictor is given a wide berth. She has no interest in feeding now. The boa is understandably tense. Its tail betrays its agitation. In a head-to-head, -head, it would certainly be the losing party. All it can do is sit tight and wait for the anaconda to pass. Along the riverbanks of Guyana's miles of virgin rainforest, female anacondas sometimes get together and bask in the sun en masse. For animals that usually keep themselves to themselves, these are odd assemblies. What's the reason behind these strange anaconda get-togethers? Are these females pregnant, hoping to find a little safety in numbers? Or are they all related, a sort of generational family meeting? Social living is not something we usually associate with these monster snakes. But then, the anaconda has proven to be a mysterious creature that continues to pose conundrums and yield surprises. A giant reptile that terrifies and enthralls in equal measures. The sandy riverbanks are also a magnet for other creatures. Places to congregate, to drink and wash, and to procreate. Other ancient creatures haul themselves from the water. Giant South American turtles. They drag their cumbersome bodies up the steep slope with only one goal in mind to lay their eggs in the sand. It's labor intensive and risky. The mothers cover their nests and leave their babies to their own devices. there are thieves about. Vultures have a taste for turtle eggs and know just where to find them. A wasted effort for a mother turtle and a mini tragedy for the babies that will never see the light of day. Months have passed since the anaconda's mating period. But unlike so many other animals, the anaconda hasn't lost a single unborn baby to would-be predators. The anaconda is different to most reptiles. Rather than laying her eggs in a nest, Exposed to marauders and at the mercy of the elements, the mother carries her young with her.
Now seven months on, it is time for her babies to emerge. Incredibly, she now gives birth to live young. There could be over 80 of them, each measuring around one meter in length. Perfect miniature replicas of their giant mother. The babies are born ready to look after themselves. Despite their mother's cannibalistic tendencies, they stay near her for some time without running the risk of becoming her next meal. It seems the anaconda does all it can to give her young the best start in life. Far from being the primitive swamp monster of our imagination, the anaconda appears to be a very conscious, caring and clever giant. A survivor from another age whose winning design has allowed her to triumph even in the face of extreme adversity.